This is Ash, and he's in for his neuter today. And when we sedated him, we noticed that he had great big floppy dew claws, and those can get caught on things. So while he's out, Dr. K is going to remove those. And he is done with his neuter and has had his dew claws removed. And so afterwards we wrap them and in five to seven days he'll come back in for suture removal and the wraps will stay for 24 hours. This is the start of Beckett's fifth week wearing his external cast. He's had it on for quite a while now and he is so ready to be out of the crate and able to be active again and not have to wear his silly little vest anymore. He gets little breaks when we change the wrap twice a week, but other than that, he has had the full vest on for five, almost five weeks straight. So he is so ready to be done. How could anybody let you come back? <laughs> Tenderheart first came in several months ago. He was missing an eye and had an upper respiratory infection. He was never able to beat the upper respiratory infection. As far as we could tell, he continued to have discharge from his nose. So we ended up sending him to MU to have some tests run and discovered that he had scar tissue up in his nasal cavity and they were able to do a procedure to expand his nasal cavity, which fixed the problem and he was adopted. But when that problem returned, um, he was returned to us. So. Now we'll figure out what the next step for him will be. Forrest is in today for growth on his nose and for some red itchy skin going on on his back. He came in as a stray found in the middle of the highway and he is blind, but he is one of the sweetest, lovingest cats ever. Forrest had some really infected ears when he first came in, so he is still dealing with some of the effects of that, and he does have to have his ears cleaned super, super fairly donkey. regularly. So we went ahead and did that while he was in today. You yeah. for a four-year-old. Midge is in today to get all of her bedding done because she's already spayed. Usually we do it whenever they're getting spayed. So she'll get a microchip, a heartworm test, rabies, bordetella, and parvo distemper. Then Dr. K just will check her out and make sure she looks healthy. She was such a perfectly behaved girl for her entire appointment. Hi, how are you? Mega Man, the pup from AC and the abuse neglect case, came back in today for a checkup. Hey, you said he's gained how many pounds? I think eight. Eight pounds. Oh, Tortito. Oh, so Tortito. He seems to be feeling all better, but Dr. K wanted to recheck his blood work just to make sure. Back, Ruben's got some competition for his job as mat monitor. Ruben, how do you feel about this? Tenderheart? She caught her toenail on something and ripped it in half. So now the nail itself is sticking up and the quick is left behind. And it's so far up mm. under her toe that we're gonna have to sedate her to be able to get up high enough to get everything out. So she just got poked and she should go to sleep soon. Although she was a very good girl, and even though most dogs freak out when they have toenail injuries, she sat so nicely for us to take a look at it. You're showing it again. You're a good girl. Yes, you're a very good girl, Rizzoli. Go night night. Good girl. So after being sedated, we pulled on the toenail and the entire toenail oh, just that. slipped right out. So now she's got the quick exposed and we will put several layers of glue to protect that quick on there, but she won't have that toenail to catch on things and rip even further. 
came in a while back with an injured tail and we have tried every different kind of method to get it to heal on its own and it's just not happening. So today we are going to amputate it. We didn't originally want to do that because the skin is angled at the end so it's going to affect how he uses the bathroom. So. He's shaved and clean and ready to go. Looks pretty now. So this guy just got dropped off. Actually, I'm not even sure if it's a guy or a girl yet. Someone found him in their garage and they said that he wouldn't get up and they thought that maybe he'd been shot in the back leg. So we're going to take a look and see if we can tell what's going on, but he doesn't smell good. And he's not standing up. He's got some goopies in his eyes. So he is a male and he's got a really big wound right underneath of his leg right here. It's very infected and swollen. So his front leg is also very, very swollen and when he moves it, it looks like it's not even stable. What happened to you, baby? This is obviously very graphic, I apologize, but his leg is so broken and very, very infected. No, I didn't know it was that bad. How long do you think, it's like green, how long do you think he's been running around or laying like this, I guess? Surely he can't be running around. I'd say it's been upwards of a week. While Zane is waking up from his tail amputation, we are getting started on the other kitty's leg amputation. So she has got the leg completely taken off. This is his front right leg. And now she is just getting the skin all stitched up. We also cleaned up all the wounds while he was under so that he didn't have to deal with any of that while he's awake. He's even bruised right on. The other side of his body, he's got just a couple more punctures that were also infected, but they're not too bad. And then his ears are very dirty and itchy, so much so that even though he's still very sedated, he's kicking his foot as we're cleaning them. So Gideon doesn't know it yet, but he's on the way to feeling a lot better. He had really bad ear mites and very dirty ears. There was a clump in there the size of like two peas put together. It was awful. So he got his ears all cleaned out. He got Revolution and a Capstar because he did have quite a few fleas. Nail trim. He got all of his wounds shaved and cleaned. He had multiple punctures. And then obviously the most noticeable he had his front right leg amputated because he did have a very, very badly broken leg with a fairly, fairly good sized chunk of bone sticking out. But Dr. K doesn't think his back right leg is broken, so that's really good news. It's just very swollen from infection. She said that she thinks he may have been like this for at least a week, so can't imagine what he's been through. 
but he is FELV and FIV negative, and now he's had all of his vaccines, and we neutered him too while he was sleeping, so he is all set up and even microchipped. There's plenty of good pain medicine. Good morning. You do. You're a very handsome man. Yes, you're a very handsome man. We've got him all set up to where he can reach his food and water right from his comfy bed since he's not quite ready to get up yet. Some puppy pads underneath of him that we can change out and hopefully the swelling will go down on his back leg soon enough that he can start getting up and moving around a little. Forrest was in earlier this week to have the lump on his nose looked at, and now he is back today so that we can go ahead and get it removed. And hopefully that is the end of the problem, although a lot of times lumps on cat don't end up being a good thing. Isla is back today to have some really nasty, nasty teeth cleaned and mammary tumors removed and have her spay done. Her whole belly is shaved. And we're going to do the spay first. And then Dr. K will start on all these lumps. And we will scrub her teeth, scrape her teeth, while she's doing that. Her spay is done now, and Dr. K is starting on the mammary chain removal. Okay, Shyla is done, but oh my goodness, does she have a lot to heal up from. Today, she had her entire mammary chain taken out because there were so many tumors. Luckily, it was mainly on one side, so just a very small incision on her other side. So we just soaked all of his little punctures open, mainly one that is on that back leg down there that's really swollen and hurting him a lot. And now he's cleaning himself up and getting a little attention. Yeah. He's such a sweet boy. Alright. Hardest part of the job, not being able to snuggle the sick kitties all the time. I'm too happy. So we've been talking about what to do with his back leg that is on the same side as the leg that had to be amputated because it seemed to be bothering him a lot. It didn't feel actually broken when Dr. K felt around while he was sedated, but he definitely doesn't want to put any weight on it. So today we went ahead and put a little splint on there to help support it. And maybe that'll help him get around because at this point he's still not getting up. So <clears throat> we're just doing our best to make him comfortable while he heals. Today is the end of Beckett's fifth week wearing his external cast. And he had some x-rays done and things are looking a lot better. So he has to wear it for one more week and then he will be a free man. He'll be so happy. The pictures on the left side are the before pictures and on the right are the after. And in the top picture on the left side of the frame, you can really see where the bone's starting to curve less. If you haven't seen the previous videos, he was born with a birth defect causing his diaphragm to curve inwards, which doesn't give his organs enough room. <laughs> well, hello. Did I wake you? I'm so sorry. You comfy? Do you need anything? Okay. You let me know if you do, okay? Okay. 
We are sending another group of cats up to another rescue that has room on their adoption floor, so there are people waiting for cats. So a lot of these cats that have been here waiting for weeks and weeks, some of them months and months, will go up there and be adopted within days. So these three kitties came from a feral colony, well, a feral family. They were living in someone's garage, but he was unable to touch them. And we had them in the intake room to begin with, which I think I talked about them in a previous video then, but then they started losing weight and looked a little sickly. So they got moved to ISO, so that kind of backtracked on their socialization. So now they are out here in our lobby where there will be lots of people coming through and petting them. And even though they're afraid, they can't run and actually hide. They have to stay out and face their fears, and usually that helps them overcome them fairly quickly. So this guy just came in. He was on the side of the road. He was, yeah, in a ditch. In a ditch, and he is very, very dehydrated. He only weighs 1.6 pounds. Some of his fluids are coming back out, but he's getting some sub-Q fluids. The good news is he is all about eating. So once these soak in a little, he can have all the food he wants. Javier came back one last time for a final check on his skin as he is now being adopted. And from here on out, he will be known as Skippy. It's always the best part whenever they start their new life.